If she can't come up, just hold on. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh my God, please get that boat. Well, they're trying to paddle out there with the hand. <laughs> with the tide? Oh, man. Just hold them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to let them know where they take you, okay? You're going to be all right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for another deep dive. Um, today we're looking into something pretty tough, a real tragedy that happened on Sapelo Island, Georgia. Yeah. We're talking about the ferry gangway collapse just a few weeks ago. Yeah. And we've got news articles, eyewitness accounts, even some official statements to go through. Right. Our goal here is to really understand what happened, the human cost, you know, the impact on everyone mm -hmm. and what's being done to figure out how this could have happened. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. And, you know, I think the setting makes it even more poignant. Sapelo Island isn't just any island. Right. This place is deeply connected to the history and culture of the Gullah Geechee people. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, the Gullah Geechee are descendants of enslaved Africans mm -hmm. who built this amazing, unique culture on the sea islands along the southeastern coast. Mm. And Sapelo Island is like a cornerstone of their heritage. Absolutely. And this tragedy happened during their annual cultural celebration. Wow. Over 700 people were there to celebrate their heritage. Imagine that, you know, the joy and connection and then yeah. suddenly this terror. It's the suddenness of it all that gets me. It was just before 4 p.m., a beautiful day, people getting ready to head back to the mainland after the festivities. Right. And then out of nowhere, the gangway collapses. At least 20 people were on it when it went down. And there's some new video footage that surfaced, and yeah. it's tough to watch, but it really shows the chaos and panic of that moment. Oh, wow. People screaming, clinging to the wreckage, the strong current pulling them away. Oh, man. It's just... And amidst all that horror, we see these incredible acts of courage. Just regular people, bystander staff from the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. Everyone jumped in to try and rescue people from the water. Absolutely. There was this one guy, J.R. Grovner, a boat captain who lives on the island. He raced to the scene in his boat. His account is incredible. Yeah. Pulling people from the water, performing CPR. He even rescued a baby. Wow. His quick thinking and bravery saved lives that day, no doubt. It's amazing how people step up in those moments. Yeah. But tragically, seven people lost their lives in the collapse. One of the victims, Charles Houston, was a chaplain for the DNR and the Georgia State Patrol. Such a loss, and it underscores how deeply this event impacted not just the Gullah Geechee community, but also those who served alongside those lost. Yeah. And for the families who lost loved ones that day, the pain is unimaginable. We know William Johnson Jr. and Queen Welch were attending the event with Zelda. Uh -huh. Johnson's Zelda survived, but tragically, William and Queen did not. And there was also a group from Jacksonville, Georgia, who lost loved ones. It's a reminder that this tragedy's reach goes far beyond Sapelo Island itself. So many lives changed forever by this one event. It's just heartbreaking. It is. It's just gut-wrenching to think about what those families are going through. And it makes you wonder, how does a community like Sapelo Island, a place so rich in history and tradition, even begin to heal after something like this? It's a long road for sure. But one thing that stands out to me, even amidst all this sorrow, is the resilience of the Gullah Geechee people. Yeah. They've faced incredible adversity throughout their history, and yet their culture, their spirit has endured. That's true. And this tragedy happened during their annual celebration a time when they come together to honor their ancestors, their traditions, their connection to this very island. Yeah, it's almost like a violation of a sacred space, you know? Right. And yet, even in the face of such immense loss, there's this underlying strength, a determination to rise above the grief and continue to celebrate their heritage. It makes me think about the wider impact of this event, because this isn't just about a collapsed gangway, right? Right. 
This tragedy forces us to look at bigger issues of infrastructure safety, especially in places that hold such deep cultural significance. Absolutely. We have to ask ourselves, how do we balance preserving traditions, celebrating heritage, with ensuring the safety and security of those who gather to do so? It's not just Sapelo Island either. We've seen aging infrastructure causing problems all over the country. And unfortunately, it often takes a tragedy like this to bring those issues to light. This event has definitely captured national attention. We've seen statements of condolence from President Biden, Governor Kemp, and it's sparked a lot of discussion about how we can prevent something like this from happening again. So what are some of the steps that need to be taken? What are the key takeaways here, especially in terms of infrastructure safety and protecting places like Sapelo Island? Well, for starters, a thorough investigation is crucial. The community deserves answers, and those answers can help inform future safety measures, not just on Sapelo Island, but for similar events all across the country. Are there specific things investigators will be looking at when it comes to this gangway collapse? What kinds of potential causes might they be considering? Well, they'll be examining every aspect of the gangway itself, looking for any signs of wear and tear, corrosion, structural flaws, anything that could have contributed to the collapse. They'll also be reviewing maintenance records, looking at how often the gangway was inspected, what kind of repairs were done, if any. And of course, they'll be talking to witnesses, trying to piece together exactly what happened in those moments leading up to the collapse. So it's a painstaking process, but so important. And while the investigation is underway, I imagine the Gullah Geechee community is starting the long process of healing and rebuilding. That's where the strength and unity of the community really shines through. We've already seen an outpouring of support both locally and nationally. People are coming together to offer aid resources and most importantly, a shoulder to lean on. It's a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there's light to be found in the compassion and generosity of others. And I think that's something we often forget. Amidst the tragedy, there's always this undercurrent of hope. People coming together to help one another to rebuild and find a way forward. Speaking of finding a way forward, are there specific lessons we can learn from this tragedy, especially when it comes to protecting culturally significant sites and ensuring the safety of visitors? Absolutely. I think this event highlights the need for a multifaceted approach. We need to be proactive, not oh, reactive. We need to prioritize regular inspections and maintenance of infrastructure, especially in areas that see a lot of foot traffic. We need clear oh safety God. protocols and emergency oh preparedness Please plans in place boat. for large events. And it's not just about putting those plans on paper. It's about making sure they're actually implemented in practice. Exactly. And this requires collaboration between local authorities, event organizers, community members, everyone working together to ensure that safety is paramount. And it's not just about physical safety either. Right. We need to consider the emotional and cultural impact of these events, ensuring that we're not just protecting people's bodies, but also their heritage, their sense of belonging. That's an important point because for the Gullah Geechee people, Sapo Island isn't just a place to visit, it's part of their identity, their story. And that's something we need to keep in mind as we move forward. How do we honor and protect these spaces in a way that respects their cultural you, significance Thank while you, also Lord. ensuring the safety you, of those who gather there. That's a powerful question and one that I think deserves further exploration. Because ultimately it's about finding that balance between preserving the past and safeguarding the future. It's hard to shake that contrast we talked about. The joy of that cultural celebration and then the horror of that collapse. Yeah. It really makes you realize how fragile life can be. That contracts, it really does stay with you. One minute you have hundreds of people celebrating their heritage connected to this beautiful island, and then in an instant, everything changes. It makes you wonder how something like this could even happen. You know, we take so much for granted, like the safety of a simple ferry gangway. And that's why the investigations are so important. We need to understand what went wrong, all the factors that led well, to this, so we can learn and prevent it from ever happening again. Those seven lives lost, they deserve justice, and their families deserve answers. Absolutely. And beyond the immediate need for accountability, I think we all share a responsibility to advocate for safer infrastructure, to demand that our communities prioritize safety, especially in places like Sapelo Island, where people gather to celebrate and connect with their roots. You know, speaking of the Gullah Geechee community, I'm struck by their resilience in the face of this tragedy. They've been through so much throughout history, and yet their culture, their spirit remains unbroken. It's incredible. Their story is one of strength, perseverance, and enduring connection to their heritage. Even with this immense loss, they're finding ways to support each other, to heal, and to continue honoring their traditions. 
and that's where we as a wider community can step in. We can offer support resources, and most importantly, we can listen to their stories, learn from their experiences, and stand with them as they rebuild and move forward. This tragedy has touched so many lives, not just on Sapelo Island, but across the country. And while we grieve those lost, it's important to remember that there's still hope, still booty to be found in the resilience of the human spirit and the strength of community. You know, let's, let's wrap up this deep dive. I want to leave our listeners with something to think about, something to ponder as we reflect on this tragedy. What are the most important lessons we can take away from the Sapelo Island Ferry Gangway collapse? What actions can we take individually and collectively to make sure this never happens again? Mm -hmm. And how can we honor those lost while working towards a safer, more just future for everyone? Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time for another exploration into the depths of knowledge and human experience.